Hi, today I'd like to talk about error codes when it comes to broken iPhones. Error 53 was an error code that was very specific. It meant, usually, that there's a hardware problem with the phone, specifically dealing with Touch ID and the Home button, when the Home button has been changed and you do an update on the phone. Now, there are many different numbers, there are many different errors that mean many different things. And I want to talk today about Error 27. Error 27 is one of those few times that my heart is warmed, and I want to thank Apple. I genuinely want to thank Apple Inc. for, to, for once in their business history in their lives for taking into consideration the Independent Service Center, taking into consideration independent data recovery specialists that have a no-fix, no-fee model. As most people know, within the no-fix, no-fee model, if we do not fix your device, if we do not recover your data, regardless of how much work or time or effort we put in, we don't get a dime. Now, this incentivizes us to not choose or take on work that, for whatever reason, has a below average likelihood of working again. And there's nothing that's going to destroy the likelihood of the device working again than if somebody's messed with it or screwed with it and done something that they're not supposed to, whether it's overheating something or scraping something or ripping up the ground plane and uh, ripping up a bunch of pads under the PMIC or any of the things that we see on a regular basis as consumer electronics repair technicians. But error 27, error 27 is a lie detector. And I gotta say, I don't know who came up with this at Apple, engineering department, marketing department, or maybe somebody in there watches my videos and just decided to throw it in as a thank you. But whatever it is, I thank you back. See, here's what error 27 does. Here's what it means. Usually when somebody is screwed with the phone and they've overheated something or they ripped a pad or they shorted this line to that line, they've screwed it up. Now, our intake salesperson will usually have a couple of questions for people. Because again, if something has been screwed with, all the motherboard repairs that have been total nightmares, that have been the ones that came back over and over again, that wound up being no fix, were board repairs that started where somebody tried to fix their own board. And rather than use proper tactics, rather than actually watch the entirety of Jess's video, or the entirety of my video, they click through and they watch 20 seconds of the video. They think, yeah, this guy can do it, that means I can too. They ignore the rest of it and they destroy everything. We'll usually ask them, so, have you tried to do anything to this before? And they'll go, no, no. But, but, the phone, the new feature that Apple implemented into the newer iPhones will say, liar. And the way that the phone says, liar, is in the form of error 27. Error 27, 99% of the time, not saying 100%, 99% of the time means that you fucked with it. And because you fucked with it, it's now dead. And I cannot get your data. Jessica cannot get your data. Drive savers cannot get your data. You gotta, again, if you have a relationship with the NSA, you can send it to their facility and see if they can get your data but we can't. And the one thing that I would implore you to do, besides obviously being honest, because again, if you're honest, at the very least, there's a chance. If I realize, if any of us realize you've been dishonest, we're just gonna get to the other stuff in the stack of work that we have to do. The first thing I would implore you to do, if you want to try any of what I talk about in these videos, I'm excited for you to try. I'm excited for you to learn, and I'm excited for you to experiment. I want you to feel the same feeling of satisfaction that we feel when we take something that's dead and make it work again. The only thing that I would ask that you do is take, is actually watch the entire video. I know that it sucks, I know that it's long, I know that it takes time, but if you wanna work on this stuff, particularly you wanna work on your own stuff and there's actually something important in there, I would implore you to actually watch the entire video, whether it's Jess's video, my video, or someone else's video that makes informative electronics repair content. If you watch a tiny bit of it and say, this looks easy, rather than actually experimenting on something else, you're going to wind up fucking something up that could have otherwise been uh, something that works. And I'm okay with you screwing something up. Again, when I decided I wanted to start working on stuff, I wanted to start working on expensive stuff immediately, and I made stupid decisions. But when I learned a little bit more, and when I got to speak to other people in the field, they were able to convince me to stop being an idiot, and they were able to convince me to, hey, Instead of working on this $5,000 amplifier, how about you buy an NAD3020 and use that to practice? It's a simpler design, and if you screw it up, eh, it's 37 bucks on eBay. If you want to take into practice Jess's reballing pyramid or any of that stuff, buy a flip phone. Buy a razor that's broken on Craigslist for $5. Even though it's a piece of shit phone, it's using a lot of the same technology as the $700 phone and a lot of the same 
in the same manners of, of uh, manufacturing. So you can practice reballing a chip with a pyramid. You can practice removing a shield without uh, knocking off every component next to it. You can practice running a jumper wire on a $10 device before you fuck up your $700 device that has all of your memories on it, that has everything that you want to be recovered. Because again, I, I will help people as much as I can. I will give out as much free information as I can in all of these videos so that people can learn. But I just want it to be very, very clear. And I mean this is business, not, not me, not to be an asshole, but the way that we view do I, DIY repairs. If you try to do it on your own, I wish you the best of luck and I hope that you learn as much as you can. But you started it, you finish it. No fix, no fee model means that we don't get paid unless we fix the problem. If anything has been done to lower the likelihood of being able to fix it, I'm not interested in taking it on. It's not to be mean, it's just business. And with this Error 27 thing, that, that, that Error 27, Error 27 is usually a lie detector. And what we found in many cases, no, nobody tried to work on this. And you, and you take the PMIC off, and there's exposed ground planes, and there's all the pads are like, they're, they're shorting together, some of them are missing. It's like, Come on, man. Do you think we're not going to see that the minute we open the phone? Just be honest, because maybe, maybe I'll be nuts and break my policy for some crazy reason. Again, not promising it, probably not going to happen, but there's a better chance of that happening. Because when we take that off and we see that, it's like, no, just no. So what I would suggest you do, if you want to learn, again, the point of this video, if you want to learn, if you want to learn, watch the entire video and then practice on something cheap. Practice on some 10-year-old compact. Practice on an NAD3020. Practice on a Razor flip phone. Don't practice on something that belongs to somebody that costs thousands of dollars. Don't practice on a device that has memories inside of it that belongs to somebody else that could have easily been extracted had it not been destroyed. Error 27, 99% of the time, means that somebody else tried to destroy it. And when we see that, I'm just saying it's usually one of those red flags that it's something that we shouldn't be working on. That's all I have to say for today. Thank you for watching. Keep watching and keep learning. Keep practicing. But again, don't practice on something that belongs to somebody else.